Hi guys, welcome back to my channel in Zain Med. This is Supreeta. I am a final year medical student in BGS Medical College, Bangalore, India. And in today's video, I am going to be talking to you guys about how to become a doctor in the US after MBBS. Before I start the video, I just want to give you guys a disclaimer that I am not a doctor yet in the US. I am just a fourth year medical student here in India. But recently, many of my seniors from my college and seniors I know from BMC and KIMS matched into wonderful residencies in the US. And since I am in my final year of MBBS, I am still struggling to decide whether I should be giving NEET PG or USMLE or PLAB. So I have been talking to a lot of these people and compiling a lot of information about this exam. So I figured I'll share it with you guys too. So all the information that I'm giving here today is what I have gathered from my seniors and I hope it is helpful to you guys. So without further ado, let's get started. To be able to get into the US healthcare system, you have to go through something called USMLE which basically stands for United States Medical Licensing Exam. And it is not just an exam but an entire process consisting of various steps and the first step in that is registering yourself through ECFMG which basically stands for Educational Commission for Foreign Medical Graduates. It's very similar to NMC that is present in India where you have to register yourself to be able to practice in India. Similarly, you will be registering yourself through ACFMG so that you can practice in the US. Once you've registered yourself through ECFMG, the next step is going to be to give your step exams. These step exams form the core of your USMLE journey because the marks that you get in the step exams are going to be highly valued whenever you're applying for any residency. So the three exams that you'll be giving are step 1, step 2 and step 3. The step 1 exam is basically going to test your first and second year subjects, Anat Physio Biochemistry and Patho Pharma Micro. It's going to be an exam consisting of 280 MCQs and it's going to be divided into blocks of 40 questions each and you will have one hour to answer these questions and there are seven such blocks. So the exam totally is going to be for 8 hours. The second exam is your step 2 exam which is again going to be a 9 hour exam and it is going to be for around 300 marks. Similarly the step 3 exam is also very similar to step 2 and both these exams are going to be testing your clinical skills and clinical subjects that is mainly your 3rd and 4th year subjects. Step 1 exam is going to be just a pass or fail exam where you have to get a minimum of 196 marks to be able to pass in the exam. You will not be getting a score. From 2022 the rules have changed and so step 1 is only going to be a pass or fail exam. But step 2 and step 3 exams are going to give you marks. These step exams are extremely important because the marks that you score in these step exams are going to form the major criteria for you to be able to get into competitive specialties in the US. And so if you are thinking about applying for USMLE or if you are thinking about preparing for your step exams, you should definitely check out the wonderful collaboration of the video resource Picmonic and the question bank TrueLearn. TrueLearn is a USMLE question bank that can be used as a testing tool as well as a learning tool. Using the various options that are given here, you will be able to create customized tests according to your needs. I will be giving you guys a detailed walkthrough of all these options that you can use to create tests in my next video when I talk about resources for USMLE. But in today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys about how to use this platform as a learning tool. Let's say you were learning something about Burkitt's lymphoma, but you got an answer wrong. So what this platform does is it not only gives you an explanation about why the particular answer is supposed to be right but it also gives you an explanation about why the other options are wrong along with detailed explanation and wonderful tables so that you don't have to go to another textbook to read up on the particular topic again. 
And to top it all, along with these explanations, they also give you short picmonic videos which act as memory anchors so that you never forget the topic again. Follicular lymphoma is a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma portrayed by the foaming lymph lime covered with hair follicles. Follicular lymphomas derive from the germinal centers of lymph nodes, the germin at center. These neoplasms usually present in adults, represented by the high school graduation scene. So if you guys are planning to use this platform for your USMLE prep, then use the link in my description below or go to the website and choose the True Learn and Picmonic bundle and use the code INZANE or INZANE to get $25 off on your purchase. Now that you know a little bit about these exams, the next question is when do you take these step exams? Well, basically you can give it even when you're a student just studying MBBS or you can also give it after you have finished your internship. There is no set order that you have to give your step one exam before and then give your step two. You can even give your step two before your step one exam. But step one covers your entire basics of paraclinical subjects. So a lot of people prefer to give step one before they give step two. What most people ideally do is give their step 1 exam in 3rd year of MBBS but even if you couldn't give your step 1 in 3rd year it doesn't matter because a lot of people give it after internship. And then once you finish your step 1 then you give your step 2, you can give it either immediately or you can schedule it whenever you want to 6 months later, 1 year later based on how much time you need for the preparation. And then finally you'll be giving your step 3 but step 3 is not essential for you to be able to apply for a residency basically if you have finished your step 1 and step 2 exams you will be able to apply to a residency but since if you're going from India after finishing your MBBS, you're going to be considered an IMG, that is an international medical graduate. It is better if you have finished your step three exams also, so that you'll be able to show that score also to your residency program directors and show them that you are competent. While you're applying for your residency, you don't just need your step exams, but along with it, you also need two other important aspects in your CV that they are going to look at. And the first one is going to be USCE, which stands for US Clinical Experience. This basically means that you will have to go to US for at least a minimum of three months and work there as an intern so that you can get US clinical experience or you'll be able to get experience of how US healthcare system is going to be. And this aspect is also very, very important because when you're applying for your residency, they will look for letters of recommendations from US physicians. And you can get these letters of recommendations only when you have had US clinical experience. The next important aspect of applying for a residency is going to be having good research publications. So in USMLE, they're not only going to look at your scores, but they will also look at how much research you have done in your field of interest. Usually, depending on the type of specialty you will be choosing, you will require a minimum of one research for residencies like internal medicine residency and and it can go up to like 10-15 research requirements if you're applying to a very competitive specialty like neurosurgery or general surgery. If you guys want to know more about how you can do research as a medical student in general, not just because you want to go do USMLE, please let me know in the comment section below and I will tell you guys what are the research opportunities that you can get as a medical student. So summing up the entire process, the first thing that you're going to do is register yourself through ECFMG and then you give your step exams. While giving your step exams, you should also be able to go and have US clinical experience and be doing research in the field of your interest along with volunteering work. And once you're done with all of these, you will be able to apply to a residency and once you apply to a residency, you will be getting interviews. And if the program directors like your CV, then you will be matching into your college of choice or your residency of choice. If you guys want me to do 
a detailed video of all the steps that are involved in the entire process do let me know if you guys enjoyed this video please do let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and also don't forget to check out true learn and pickmonic which are wonderful platforms for you to conquer your smle